about this. Uh, he is not a Shylock. He is a shyster, I think. Actually, he's neither one. Oh. He's our friend Craig Gottwals. Craig, the Obamacare lawyer. Craig, how oh, are you, sir? Licking my wounds after that one, Joe. Wound Good. liquor. Oh, boy. Uh, no, he is a, an honest man indeed and a knowledgeable one and the leading authority perhaps in the world on what the hell's actually going on in Obamacare. What's the latest, man? Oh, we've had a lot of fun. You know, I got a couple fun facts to hit you with uh, before we get into our story here. I, I just spoke to a, a software engineer, uh, actually a family member whose number one client is the federal government. I'll leave it at that. Uh, he told me that healthcare.gov has five million lines of code. And to put that into perspective, Microsoft Windows only has 40 million lines of code. He said it'll never, ever be secure, and the best advice he could give them would be start over. There's just no way you're going to secure that many lines of code. It's wow. a beast. Wow. 40 million versus 500 million blew me away. Um, and, I, and I got a fun fact for you. You know, I, I'm, I think I'm as cynical as Joe Getty now. I was thinking about this last night, and I thought, I, I get it. You know, the president's promise that everybody's health care is going to go down $2,500. It, we've all had it go down $2,500, right? I, I know how that's possible. After you take the 15 million people that have lost their plan and now pay zero, when you average everybody out, yeah, we're all down about $2,500. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I was in the office for literally three hours this week in the New Year's guy, in the New Year, guys, when the first million dollar fraud came across, uh, came across my desk. Wow. Um, uh, an employer in Texas who pays their own claims, which you guys have mentioned before, it's for employers with more than 500 employees, the most common arrangement is to actually pay your own claims, and you just pay an insurance company to administer the claims, to go ahead and cut the checks. Interesting. So if I need $500,000 worth of heart surgery, my company actually pays that. Yeah. Now okay. they, they might have a, a really high deductible policy behind the scenes, like 100000 or $200,000 deductible to help them out, but they typically pay that claim. Now, if you, have, if you happen to work at a company with more than 1,000 employees, it's a virtual certainty that's your arrangement. It's hmm. just the way it works. I didn't okay. know that. I don't think most people know that. Yeah, so I, I would assume that whatever you know, major media mogul outlet you guys are on the plan, it's a, probably a self-funded plan. And the employees, you know, you, you get an employee card that says, I have Acme Insurance, and you think you, think you have Acme Insurance, but you really don't. Acme Insurance is just a, a company that's renting their doctors and their administration to your employer who's paying the claims behind the scene. It's the most common arrangement. So, okay. And that's only relevant because of this. So this particular employer in Texas and their broker call me up and start asking me for advice on something they're going to do and asking me about the legality of it. And I'm not going to speak to the legality of it on your air. I'm just going to point out this is what employers are going to do. They just got a young kid hired by them who's got a very specialized condition that's going to cost in excess of $85,000 a month just for the medication. 85 k a month? 85 k a month, guys. Okay. So this is a million-dollar claimant. Now, this happens. This We get every claimant every so often. It's, you know, I get maybe in my world, I see maybe 10, 20 of them a year. It's not super common, but it happens. So this kid's going to cost a million dollars. Now, the employer is saying, well, I'm going to pay. I'm on the hook for those claims. So What's the what's the problem with me going to the Obamacare exchange in my state, buying this kid the very best Obamacare policy he money can buy, and then telling the kid not only will I buy you that policy, but I will pay every out of pocket expense you may have. So instead of coming on our plan, employee, where you'll you know use our plan and it'll cost you about five thousand a year because you'll have copays and deductibles and whatnot, I'll send you to the Obamacare plan. And it'll cost you zero. And you'll own the plan, and you'll have it for life, and it'll be better coverage for you with your condition. And the taxpayers will pay all those bills. Right. As you know, that million dollars is going to hit Acme Insurance Company, and the taxpayers are on the hook for roughly 80% of Acme Insurance Company's hit when that large claim comes out through the various bailouts built into the law. Right. And, and by the way, it's worth pausing for folks who haven't been listening to you and us talk about this. And it is funny, the mainstream media has just caught on to this fairly recently, that if Insurance companies take big losses because not enough healthy people sign up or, you know, super sick people sign up, et cetera, et cetera. The, the uh, taxpayers are, are covering most of that. That's right. 
for the first three years by law. We cover uh-huh. we cover fifty to eighty percent of that cost uh, mandated by law. And it'll get extended because otherwise the insurance executives will revolt and so say out. out loud what a disaster this whole thing is. Well, they would pull out, right? And it would all collapse, and and maybe that's what they want, as we've talked about. Maybe that's what the administration wants. So the, the question was, is it legal? And the answer is twofold. One, there's nothing in Obamacare that makes it illegal. They didn't put a provision in called an anti-dumping provision, <laughs> insert joke there, um, that would make it illegal. Medicare, for example, if this person were an oldster, if this person were a 66-year-old and the employer wanted to push them to Medicare and pay the premium for them, it would be expressly illegal. Hmm. But in Obamacare, they did not put that same provision, call it, you know, being a numbnut, call it, you know, maybe it was a really nefarious, uh, again, you know, let's make it collapse deal. The, the only issue comes up is, is this discrimination? And yes, technically it is because you are treating somebody differently based on their health status. But note, what you are doing is you're taking the very sick person and you're giving them an extra option. You're not forcing them to anything. You're saying, look, our plan is not going to be as good for you as this plan. We'll buy you this plan if you want. So you're, you're giving the ill person an extra option. So a pers- in order to be sued and lose on this, you'd have to actually be sued by a healthy person saying, I don't get the same option. So, uh, yeah. right, right. So, so it's not so, a very likely suit. So, so big companies all across the country could catch on to this and anybody they've got that, uh, you know, you wouldn't have to be as sick as, as, as that dude, but, uh, you know, costs quite a bit. You'd push them onto the exchange then. Absolutely. Companies with more than 500 employees. Basically, this is this is a, a small uh, manufacturing company in Texas, relatively speaking. And they they figured it out immediately, called me to ask what the risk was. I gave them an evaluation. Um, and I can assure you there's going to be tens, if not hundreds of thousands of these that occur over the year. And with, <laughs> it's just going to I wonder, I w- explode the price. There. I wonder if even a, uh, you know, a, a, a family that's going to have a baby would be expensive enough that you'd want to have that guy or woman move on to the exchange. That's an interesting question, because, Craig, you point out in your email to us that if this company in Texas pays all of the costs for this dude for the year, that's only going to be about $8,000, as opposed to a million right. in claims. Right. So, yeah, I mean, what does it cost to have a baby these days, I according to those bizarre works of fantasy that are hospital bills? I don't know, but it's a 60, lot. 60, 70 grand, depending on where I you would, go? I would those, think so. Those bills can be, yeah, 20 to 30 grand, depending upon how long the, the stay is and whatnot. Well, so, yeah, then everybody from a pregnant gal yeah. to, to somebody you got to help them get diagnosed with a big C is going to get dumped onto Obamacare, yes? Well, yes. But now remember, if you have, let's say you have much more than 1,000 employees, let's say you have 20,000 employees, you're not going to bother with this. This is, you know, you're not going to bother with a $20,000 pregnancy. You might bother with a, a young individual who's got a million-dollar claim every year. Yeah, interesting. So in, in perspective, yeah, I, I don't see. Now, if you're a 400-person company and you've got a pregnancy coming and you really want to farm the system, yeah, maybe you would. Yeah. Craig, the Obamacare lawyer. Craig, we appreciate it. Let's stay in touch. More to come, we know. Thanks, gentlemen. All right, you got it. Uh, you know, and the way this works is, and I'm not cynical, I'm realistic, the bureaucrats are going to get hold of this wrinkle. They're going to realize the problem of it. They're going to uh, issue another 10,000 pages of regulations that will cover this. The free market will immediately find a way around that. Uh, they will have another six months, another 10,000 pages of regulations, and soon the Obamacare Administration Department of the federal government will be 1.2 million people with the budget of a billion dollars, and it will go away roughly when the sun burns out. <laughs> <laughs> All right.